Hi everyone, Gabby James, um, the tour of how I make my arrows. Now, I, I would have got this done a lot sooner, but I was waiting for some, well I'll just show you what it is. It's that, um, the copper that they put on the arrows, you know, on the medieval arrows, they put it in the binding that mixed with some wax. Well, some people have different opinions what's mixed, some people say be wax and tree sap and a bit of tree sap. Um, some say it's some hide glue and other and wax and all that. But anyway, I did make a batch of before, like um, oh, must have been nearly a month ago. But I think my glue I went off or any or something the hide glue I put in with it and it didn't work. It wouldn't spread. It wouldn't spread nicely. It wouldn't stick to the shit. It was you know just a complete disaster. So I'll just be showing with normal wax how to do one, how to do it. I was showing. The entire process from start to finish, I won't show all the glue up and all the binding, I'll just show, do it, do a two, one or two wraps and then just cut to it finished because it's, new, it's a nuisance. Anyway, the first one we see here is a tapering jig. Okay. A, because a lot of rose arrows, like the medieval, or the many rose arrows, they were either tapered, like they were 12mm from the point and tapered all the way down to about 3 8 which is, is at 9.5 millish or something in metric I don't know or they were barreled or spindle shaped where they are thin at the tip so just say it would just say 9.5 mil and then and get fatter to the full half inch or 3 8 an inch or whatever I wrote we're talking about and then they tapered back down they did okay they wouldn't have had plastic knots like these, these are just for convenience for me. And the same with the tips, they're just convenience just for making them. So I'll show you how you can taper them. Now obviously this, well not obviously, this here is just a bit of wood. You can use steam on that, which I've used before, but my other jig, I don't know where I put it anyway. A piece of, it's a just a piece of steel box too. You can use angle iron, you can use angle on here, and it's a bit of a sanding belt clamp. You see wedged in there, and at this end it's just half an inches, and at this end here it goes down to about nine point five, nine point something like that. It should be. Can I get this? Yeah, I can just get. Yeah, it's about the diameter of that, the head of that point, which is about nine point five ish. And it is 16 inches long. The reason it's 16 inches long because I want to be able to make arrows up to, you tape the arrows up to 32 inches. So you need to, so whatever length you're going to do, you have the jig half the size. What we do is we're going to put this in the power drill and the chuck. I've already cut this arrow down, so I think it's just a little over, I think it's 31 inches. I've cut this down and we're going to feed this in with a drill all the way up to here we are. Now, with barreling and that, some people you don't, some people will not want the the thickest part to be dead in the centre because you know if you taper one side down more. So if we were to say go, if we just put a mark here and say 14 inches, and we took the taper down one side for the front for the front half, and then tapered the other side even further, like the full 16 inches, and that that would put the fatter point one way or the other and that would want to go to the point just to get a bit more forward and mass because even on like a really like if you want like a really like, like fly arrow thing where the center is you just want to be a bit up front it, it, it might be an inch might be a little more depends on how long your arrow is and all that point you know it will, it will vary depending on what you're making it what you're using to make the arrow anyway enough rambling let's get on with it and I'll just get yeah get the drill in, we'll start feeding it.
there we are that took the tip down a bit the one end down and barely took out off there right you see how it's a lot straight is because there's quite a lot of heat going in there and it's uh, yeah which i find is another bonus for doing it like this Anyway, I'll play for the other end, but I might just go back about 14 inch. I might just do it the same. We'll see. But anyway, I'll be back to you in a second once it's done. That's the arrow tapered in that. I've done another one just because I forgot to mention that some of these arrows, they were like parallel and then they just tapered at one end. You know, tapered all the way down to knock. So that would give you more, or give you more weight and most of the weight would be at the front. Anyway, you can see this is just a bit of wood with a slot in it that's cut down and the hole in for the shaft I've just got it clamped like you know, only clamped lightly. And we're gonna saw, we're sawing with the grain in the direction of the grain because we're gonna put the horn sliver in here. Yeah, let the tool do the work, don't try and rush it because you'll end up just ripping out the shaft. Now I just need to adjust it up and I'll lift it up. Then I'll, I'll show you what we're going to do with the horn, with the horn up when I'm done. Alright, that's the slot cut. I'm going to widen it up a little. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll put two hacksaw blades on together and just go down. I might, I'll see, I might do three, I think. I think two is just enough. Then I'm going to put a sliver of horn and just epoxy it in. Well, if you can't use, or I don't like working with horn, I don't like the dust and that, you can use some of these like plastics, like the PVC ABS, um, is it HDPE, I think it is, the, this pipe is, and just flatten it, and you've got basically the, the insert. Anyway, I'll get this glued in and that and done, then I'll get back to you when it's needed, you don't need to see it drying and all that. Alright, that's it glued up and dried. I put a knock in as well. I cut that with just a towel saw, which cuts them a little bit. I think they're a little bit baggy on a 3.2 mil string, but you can just do the hacksaw trick, like I said, and then clean up the knocks. But this wants a bit more cleaning up. But you can sit in a want some rounding a little here, which I might do at a later date. Just get this video done quick. Get this video done as fast as we can because they're dragging. Anyway, now we are going to mark however long we want feathers. Like I want my feathers to start here, which is about. Two, roughly about two inch from the edge and I want to come about here I think it would be I think my feathers would just be six inches you can put longer ones on you can put short depending on what you want anyway and I'll get it covered in wax now like I said normally you'd use this green stuff off the copper in the wax in some beeswax and a bit of tree sap and paste on and then put the feathers on bind it then you heat it up and thingy i'll put the wax on i'm just going to use this blue candle wax so you can see it and then i'll bind it and put the feathers on there we are i actually done the feathers i've only cut by hand i've cut them a bit sloppy but you get the idea you can use a feather burn you could i haven't got one on me at the minute yeah anyway that's the thing done as you can see I'll just show some alternatives because some people won't want to put horn knocks on and hand yeah, and hand forged arrowheads. Some people want to use more standard size, so I'll just do a quick thing on that on one of the barreled arrows I've got. What we have here is a my ghetto down anchor. Now what it is is eight mil hole, cut with a hacksaw at an angle and just bent a little just so it's a bit of a sharp edge here. We're going to twist it. Yeah, just the right amount of pressure, not too much. And make sure you turn it enough. I need to make a new one of these. You can see it's a bit blunt, but oh well. For this purpose, it'll do all right.
there we go you can see that's put a nice tape that's put a nice eight mil slot so we can just put normal heads on now you can see it's a teeny weeny bit off but we'll just take that out with just a smooth wood you know, metal file just take it out and a bit of fine sandpaper just true it up so it's just a nice conk transition and I'll do the same with the point and annoyingly our buddy can't find any more points must have misplaced them somewhere but look you can see that would be how it would go this is just a parallel um, field point they're about 80 grain I think 100 grain point I'm not sure but they're quite hollow they're hollow all the way up to here and that just glues on you see that would be the same now if you you don't have to do it like this if you buy a proper sharpening tool you can put some stand heads on these are some medieval ply then ply heads oh you, oh you can see can't you um, if I just took that to a point that would fit on funny thing actually them plies if you look they are like a Mary Rose head just without the actual broadhead part I didn't and that, that's just a coincidence the same length them plies them these heads they're just, well, they're just a spike yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's how I make these sort of arrows anyway. If anyone's interested. If you're wondering what they spine out of, they should fly well out of any, about 140, 150, they're ju they should be okay for that. Depending on the bow, because if you shot them out like some crazy foam core, carbon bow with really narrow limbs really thin limbs and everything and something like that they they might start getting a bit weak for something like that but yeah another video oh i'll show how to make these bamboo arrows because they're different they're a lot of heat most of the work with them is heating and straightening and cleaning out the thing and these have tang arrows which i've made in other videos anyway that's all i'm buying so if you didn't borrow anyone.